Uh, but we want to now introduce Representative Christy Houlihan. Excuse me, she's a Democrat from Pennsylvania. Uh, Representative, thank you for joining us. First of all, your reaction to what you're seeing, where you are. Are you safe? I am safe. Uh, and I am in the Capitol complex, generally speaking. And my reaction is what I am assuming all of our reactions are, which is I'm devastated. You know, this is um, an unbelievable visual for all of us to be watching on our screens at home and here in Washington to see the people's house being pillaged by a mob uh, is one of the things that I never thought I would see in this country. Give us your account of where you were and, and what you witnessed uh, inside the chambers. So I was not in the chamber. I'm a member of the delegation from Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is one of the states where we anticipate there will be a conversation about the validity of our results. And so the delegation, Pennsylvania delegation, had been working uh, with, uh, our, with our speeches. And so I had been working uh, from home and ended up walking in kind of around 1 or 1.15, uh, and that's around when the, the Capitol building was breached. And so watch people, you know, mounting stairs that typically are empty, watch people pillaging um, the, the, the area, and very, very loud uh, booms, which I assumed were maybe crowd disbursement. Um, but it was literally otherworldly uh, and, and really very, very concerning, as you can probably imagine. Representative, what do you think will happen moving forward? What do you think should happen? There's talk that there may be those who've made the point of objecting to these electoral college votes. And that, after seeing what's happened here, will be it. They've made their point. Do you think that will be the case? Well, I certainly hope so, and that's obviously their prerogative because of how uh, our Constitution and this process is structured. You know, they have the ability and the right to do uh, what they had anticipated and planned on doing. But I and I think a number of other people are just as resolute as we ever have been to get back to work, to the work of the people, to move forward in this next step in the process uh, towards the peaceful transition of power from one administration to the other. And so I'm hopeful that we'll be able to return to work as, as soon as possible, and I'm ready. Congresswoman, whom do you blame for today? Well, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around, but it, you know, frankly, comes from leadership. And leadership uh, from the very top of our nation has been egging on this kind of behavior for a very long time. It's one of the reasons why, frankly, I raised my hand to run for Congress. I'm uh, just recently was sworn in last week or this week to my second term, and so I'm one of those people who was really motivated to serve at this really difficult time to try and unite, unite and heal our country. And so I do really lay a lot of responsibility at the feet of leaders, leaders who, uh, who do not openly, outwardly condemn this sort of behavior. And then there also is responsibility on the part of the individual. People make decisions, and they're making horrible, horrible decisions right now that have very, very bad and long-lasting implications for generations to come. And we should all be really saddened by what we're seeing right now in our nation. You mentioned that Pennsylvania is one of the states that's been at the focus of this debate moving forward, and it was certainly expected to be one of the states that was challenged. What would you say to people who, Congressman, are watching this, and despite the numerous defeats in court and elsewhere, the pushback from secretaries of state, think this was rigged? It, it's one of those conversations which is hard to have, important to have, but really importantly, I come from not just Pennsylvania, one of those states that is in contention, but from a part of Pennsylvania that is very purple. Uh, Chester County, where I live, is 40 percent Democrat, 40 percent Republican, 20 percent independent, and we're a community that voted across the aisle and does historically. And I would ask those people who still believe that this is in some way a, a rigged election, which one of those ballots where people voted for Vice President Biden and then voted for my opponent, which one of those ballots where people voted for President Trump and then voted for me, and there were many, which one of those would you say should not be honored and respected? Uh, and it is really hard when you start to tease apart the numbers there. Hundreds of thousands and millions of ballots in the state of Pennsylvania would be uh, people would be disenfranchised, and that is not the will of the people. And we should respect the will of the people and, and the uh, solemnity and, and, and due process of our democracy. And Con oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Con one, one last question before we let you go. I know, obviously, you're having <laughs> a, a surreal day. Uh, just, I'm fascinated by the practicalities of the moment. How do you anticipate getting out of the Capitol tonight and when? I'm not sure. 
Um, I'm not worried. Uh, I am resolute and in- intentional. And this is in many ways certainly not what I expected uh, from my freshman and now sophomore experience. But it is unfortunately where we are. So I am determined that if they call the House back into session sometime today, that I will be there. Uh, and I am confident that I will be, uh, if, if the time comes, I will be taken somewhere else. Uh, but I am calm and collected and resolute right now. Duty will prevail. Representative Chrissy Houlihan, a Democrat from Pennsylvania, we thank you so much on this, um, on this moment in history and your perspective and your time. Thank you and be safe as you continue to thank navigate you. the waters in D.C.